don't do this and don't do that. I'll tell you why in just a minute. Hello everyone, it's Jasmine, your brow expert and happy new year. It's uh, It's been a few weeks now and I don't know if you can still say that. I think you have about a month to say happy new year. Don't know the etiquette of that, but nevertheless, happy new year guys. I did a video on this don't do this and don't do that on my Instagram page. And it does pretty well because I think it really just shows you what not to do. <laughs> At least what I think you should not do. So I've been a brow artist and your expert for hopefully a while now. And I've been still shape, I still shape eyebrows at the Anastasia Beverly Hills Salon. So, and some of you guys have come by, said hello and gotten your brows shaped by me. Thank you so much. Thank you for trusting me with your eyebrows. So, and keep on coming and make your appointment and get your best brow, right? So this video is gonna be about why I, why I said don't do this. And I did touch on this last year about that, but what I did not touch is a little bit more of just the health of your brow hair. I get asked this all the time on um, just this this platform on YouTube, on my Instagram, just everywhere I get people asking me, I do this to my eyebrows, will it grow? I use this serum, why isn't my hair growing? So I figured why not touch a little bit on that today? And there's a few things I'm gonna let you guys know towards the end of the video. So I'm asking you guys to stick around. So wait for that. I have a little announcement and don't worry, even though this video is just me, <laughs> I will still be posting videos of clients that I shape eyebrow eyebrows for that you can relate with. So I think that's important and I know that you guys get a lot out of that. So don't worry, that is st still gonna come back in 2024. I love brow pencils because it's quick, easy, and very um, very convenient, right, to travel with. And like I said, it's a little easier because you can just draw on your eyebrows, especially if you're learning how to shape your brows with some makeup. Pencils are the best way to go. And you can lose some hair by pressing too hard. <laughs> so here's, here's the thing. What I want to do is I want to show you guys the full video on Instagram. It's only just about like a little over a minute. And uh, it'll just quickly go over what I would probably get in this long tangent about. So check this video out and I will see you guys right back in about a minute or so. Don't do this and don't do that. Why shouldn't you do that? Because you can pull out your brow hair. If you press too hard, be very gentle. When you're using a pencil or a brush for that matter, you want to press very lightly. And here's another tip. When you fill in your eyebrows, you pretty much probably do it this way, right? And then you're like, mm, it's a little thin. Why don't you go around it? Go around that thin line up here and then go below. So go up and then go below and look how it's getting fuller, right? So don't cheat yourself. You can get your brows a little fuller by going around that thin line. Have an old brow tattoo covered with some concealer so the colors go on much darker. But you know what? Try a darker color so that way you don't press so hard to get that color on there. Now for the spoolie brush, if you press really hard, you tend to pull out your eyebrow hair, right? I've done that. So you want to go very gentle. Press very lightly. This is important to do, right? Because the front can get so dark and so square. You need to comb around us. That way it gets really soft or soft as you can, right? Use your finger to soften the edges. And that is all you need to do. So there you go. That is all you need to do. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? Well, it can be. Well, let me go over just real quickly from what the video said. Um, first of all, it's always about the pressure. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I always mention about the pressure. Uh, light pressure will go a long way and you don't really need to press that hard if you're using a darker color. So I touched that, touch on that uh, from the video where if you go with a bit of a darker color, you're less likely to press really hard, right? Because the color is going on immediately. Because the most important thing to no, is that you want to pick the right shade for your eyebrows. Sometimes the color may go on dark 
or darker than you wanted, but the, but the shade might be correct, right? So um, that's important to remember. And I often tell clients, my clients, that if you're using a pencil, even a brow powder, try something a little bit darker as long as the shade is correct. So like my hair has some highlights, but it's a little bit on the darker side, right? I don't want my brows to be too dark, but I do, uh, I don't want to struggle and really try to get that color on there. So I'll go with a, like maybe an ebony or an ash brown or, or even an, um, a granite if I'm in the mood. <laughs> And I'll just press very lightly. And so those colors have a lot more of a kind of like a br deep brown, but almost like a blue undertone. So it, there's, it's more cool. If you're on the blonde ashy side, by the way, I do have a video that I will uh, link. It's got um, all the different colors, you know, that you can choose. I get, I get questions asked by you guys. What color should I use? It's hard to pick the color. I get the colors from online and I'm not sure what to pick. So check that video out. It really does help in, in helping you figure out what color to choose for you because I put a lot of faces with different hair colors and skin tones. So that might really help you out in picking the right color and also the right product. Sometimes we're not sure which product to use. So check that video out. Anyway, so yeah, so it, this video really is all about the pressure. And I just want you guys to just remember, be conscientious, especially when you use a spoolie brush, to not press so hard on your skin or in the eyebrow because that means that you're really just trying to take off too much and you're you're hurting the the brows. They they may not be able to they're not ready to come off. And I say this because our brow hair does shed. So, let's get into now I covered a little bit about the the pressure, right? And that video hopefully covered it. Okay, so let's get into the health of the brows. Now I have some notes in front of me, so bear with me. But I'm not gonna just get really in. I don't want to get totally into all of the of the health of brow hair because I'm just gonna touch on what I know. Because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a dermatologist. Definitely consult with one if you do have one that you trust. But this is just my experience. I've been shaping eyebrows for, gosh, um, maybe over like 25 years now. You lose count when it's 20 plus. And so trust me when I tell you, I've seen every brow, hair, people, condition, all ages, men, women. So I think I know a little bit about the health of the brow hair. So just remember one thing, the brow hair is very much like the eyelash hair and your head of hair. They function a little differently, of course, but they all have similarities. So let me go over the condition of the hair loss. A lot of times it's the over tweezing. It's, it's rubbing your eyebrows like with your spoolie brush or the pencil. Or I've, I've had my clients like rub their uh, eyebrows with their finger too hard. I'm like, oh, don't, don't press too hard that way. <laughs> you can lose brows that way, okay? So that is something to remember. Um, just remember that the brow hair does shed, much like your head of hair. Uh, even when you're combing and you're like, I didn't press that hard, that hair might be ready to just shed. You 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 do have a new one coming out, um, especially if you're young. <laughs> you're constantly, re you know, just sh hairs coming off and another hair is coming out. So it, that that's just normal, right? And there's a there's a there's a time also depending on your stress level and what's going on in your body or you're having a baby maybe, so your hormones are all over the place. The, there's a lot more hair coming off, but in that case, the hair should come back. So I'm, I don't be worried about that. And so just remember that between around two to four months, your new hair comes out. So um, again, it's like your head of hair. It, it comes off. There's more coming out. So just remember that, right? So our brows are no exception to that. And again, like I said, there are medical conditions as to why you lose eyebrow hair. So it's not just your heavy pressure, right? It could it could be your thyroid. So there's certain types of alopecia conditions that that you might be going through, and that's where your brows are are coming off. Or and the obvious one, right, is that when you go through when you have cancer, you're going through a chemo. Obviously, you're going to lose hair. Some people don't, but for most of the people that are going through that treatment, you're losing all that hair, right? So after that treatment, your hair should 
come back. Okay, so like I said, it's just a lot of the same things that might be losing your eyebrow hair is your head of hair and eyelashes is just also, like I said earlier, the hormones, the stress, lack of sleep. So there's a lot of health in internal health conditions that causes the health of your eyebrows, aside from over tweezing. <laughs> So if you've never over tweezed and you're like, I'm still losing hair, that can be it as well. So let's talk about what makes a brow hair healthy, <laughs> okay? So uh, biotin is, is really good for your um, the condition, the health of the hair. The peptides promotes really good healthy follicles, so that could be a really good thing. And um, amino acids, I've read that it's really good for you, so that's just good for you in general for your body the condition of your nails your head your hair that also contributes to the health of your eyebrows so the balanced diet you know it's i think a lot of good protein helps in the good condition of your uh, brow hair just like again your head of hair so um, the lack of protein will obviously not uh, keep your brow hair nice and full so keep that in mind so i'm a really big strong be believer of really good health really just shows you the good strong nails and your just your head of hair lashes brows so keep reminding yourself that that all has something to do with it how do you grow your brow hair <laughs> i get this is probably the most important question i get by my clients, by so many of you guys, what works and what doesn't. So obviously stop over tweezing. <laughs> and I have a lot of videos on my main page where it shows you to map out the eyebrows. So if you start outlining and mapping out your eyebrows, any any hair around there, may, that probably is an easy one to tweeze out. So if you're not close to a brow artist, not close to me, <laughs> or getting your brows shaped, but you just do it yourself, definitely outline the uh, eyebrows and just tweeze out some of those hairs that are not in that outline. So that is a big help. So don't use your uh, therapy session in the tweezing time <laughs> because you can over tweeze, right? Okay, so yeah, that's a good tip. Don't, don't use your uh, tweezing time in your therapy session. Look at some photos of yourself. Look at uh, when you were younger, because that kind of tells you how much hair you really had. We're all born with a certain amount of hair follicles, and that's it. It's just like, ladies, your eggs, right? You're you're born with a certain amount of um, eggs in your body, and over time, you lose little by little. It's the same thing with follicles. You're you're you get what you get when you're born, and that's it. <laughs> we don't get any more follicles after that. So I often get people asking me, you know, I'm, I'm using certain things to get more hair. So I always ask them, well, what did your hair look like before? Like, did you have a full set of eyebrows? Because if you didn't, when you were younger, you're not going to get any more by, you know, I don't want you to have to spend more t money and things that you think is going to make more hair when when you were never born with it to be uh, in the beginning. So don't waste your money on that because it's just not going to happen, right? So I'm giving you guys the honest truth here. That's why my brows are tattooed <laughs> because I wasn't really born with much follicles hair to begin with. So that was my solution. It doesn't have to be yours, but that was mine. So how do you make them grow if you can, right? So I get asked a lot of coconut oils, uh, you know, can you put uh, all the other essential oils? I get like the, the castor oils, the, the brow serums. Can you use that? Will that work? Well, like I said earlier, when you're born with an X amount of follicles, that's it, right? So what you can do is all the things I've mentioned earlier by having a really good healthy diet and obviously keep your stress level low. <laughs> which is a little difficult for most of us. So yeah, I mean, just just kind of meditate. And, and um, I've been doing like the, these deep breaths every day, try to remind myself to take some deep breaths. I realize that I don't breathe that, mu that well. <laughs> and so I think that is very good for you. So does the oils work? Um, yes and no. I think the most important thing to remember is that when you're doing uh, brow serums, lash growing serums, uh, coconut oils, and all of those oils, 
I think it works in this in the in the way that you are less likely to over tweeze because now you're doing something to want to make the hairs grow, right? So I think it's a psychological thing maybe where you're you're not tweezing, not over tweezing. So if you're doing that treatment and you're and you're, you're not over tweezing, then that's a good thing, right? So do it. Why not? If that's preventing you from over tweezing. Um, I think, you know, like castor oils, they're probably really good for you uh, topically and it keeps your hair strong. So yeah, maybe try that out. It, it will probably prevent from premature uh, uh, hair loss, right? And it just keeps the root strong. So that's important because as we age too, your follicles um, is, is not as strong. <laughs> so anything that can keep those follicles as strong as possible great. I'm all for that. I just don't want you to spend a ton of money and thinking that, you know, this, this can work or the, or the growth serums. Now I say, listen to me guys. I say the growth serums work. I say that to my clients and I'm going to say that to you. Here's the trick. It works in that. That's why lash serums work, right? It works in that it makes the hair grow right? Um, I often tell this to my clients when you're say, when people say, Oh, did, did your hair grow? Um, or you, you're, or did you cut your hair? You're, you're, you're thinking, yeah, it grew. You're not saying that you got more hair. You're saying it grew, it got longer, right? So that's why the lash serums can say it makes it grow. We're not thinking that you're, um, you're, you've gotten more hair, right? Where you got to just remember that these companies can say, because it does work, it makes the hair get longer. <laughs> That's why when you use those serums and it kind of trickles around, your, your fuzz hair starts getting longer. <laughs> so if you have a lot of fuzz hair, maybe go for it. Maybe it's going to make that hair get longer. So just I just want you to remember that, it, that it works in that it makes it grow in length, not more in follicles. So... I don't, I don't want to be like, oh, spoiler alert here, but I just want you to be realistic. But there are times where if you have maybe a follicle, it just, it's the, 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 the groundwork isn't healthy. The soil isn't healthy and you're, you're really getting that soil healthier and you're in that kind of mid age range between like, I don't know, like 30 to 30 to 40, you still got a lot of follicles that you probably had before, you know that you had before, and, and it might just come out and these products might help um, uh, make them grow out. Like maybe they're doormat, right? But just remember, follicles are something that can only be uh, taken care of and it's going to regenerate. But once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> So that's why there's brow tattoos and microbladings and amazing artists out there, which by the way, uh, I did do recently, if you just go on my main page, I did do uh, pros and cons of microblading when you don't have any more hair left. <laughs> or if you're maturing and you really want some more background, that's definitely something to consider. But be careful who you go to because our faces change. Even if you, if you get fillers or Botox, whatever you do or don't do as we age, the structure, the bone structure changes, your muscle changes. So you don't want this crazy tattoo ink and then it's not going to move with you. So that's something to remember. So that's why you want to go to someone really good and that knows what they're doing. <laughs> okay. So I hope I covered, I didn't cover everything. If I didn't cover everything or some of the questions you have, I didn't cover here definitely ask me in the comment box and I will try to get to it and answer those questions. But again, like I said, I'm not a dermatologist. So those any like really medical types of questions, you obviously want to refer to your doctor in that. But so just remember, be gentle with your hair. And if you had these serums, continue using it. It doesn't hurt, right? So why not, right? Thank you guys for submitting your, uh, your face, your photographs in my uh, email box for the free digital brow makeover. I uh, just want to quickly mention that today is the last day and uh, I will let you guys know by this week, maybe tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll let you guys know that you have been selected. And if some of you still want to submit that, definitely do so. All the information is on the video that I posted last week. Just a quick note. Some of you guys uh, sent me 
uh, some good photographs, but some of you guys had like left your glasses on. You can't see your eyebrows that way. And you're having the, like the side profile or tilt your head. Try not to do that because then it's hard for me to digitally do your eyebrows. You want to make sure that your face is head on. Um, just send in a selfie where you can see your face on the phone so you know the direction that you're moving if you don't have someone taking the photo for you. But make sure you're indoors. Don't be out in your balcony or, you know, because then that overhead lighting is not, it, it doesn't work. So be in a dark, in an unlit room where it's, there's no light, but make sure your face is facing a window where it is bright. So that way you get a really good shine on your face. And, you know, if, if you have hair down, don't try not to have it like on the side of your eyebrows like that. Then I can't see the rest of your eyebrows because the ends are important too. So make sure that your hair is away. Don't make a lot of expressions. Be as stoic as possible. And don't, you know, make be mindful where your chin is. Don't go up here and don't like don't do this. Just be very straightforward and just have a slight smile if you if you want. And you can have makeup on. You don't have to. It doesn't matter. So yeah, I hope that helps. And so thank you so much for being a part of this YouTube family and the comments that you guys give me. It really helps. Don't forget, so the even the, not, not the harsh negative ones or the mean ones, but the constructive criticisms definitely help because the comments, this is where I try to get my videos to be better for you, try to get some good content for you. And so, yeah, I just want to be able to show you guys the best brow techniques as possible because I always say this, it's one of the hardest things to do, right? I think it is. Well, not for me anymore, but I think it's just one of those things where, and I'm going to touch more on this this year, you guys, but good eyebrows allows everything else to look pretty good, right? I mean, you feel better. You're more confident. Um, you're not a makeup wear person. You feel brows are on point. You don't have to do much. And I think that's why the brows are that much more important. <laughs> don't you agree? So... Thank you so much for subscribing. Definitely like this video if you if you do like it. It does help me. So, and by the way, here's the last announcement I have for you guys. Don't forget next week. Next week, I'm going to show you guys my eyeliner tattoo journey. <laughs> It's it's going to be it's going to be something that I think is going to be informative if you're thinking about this. If you never thought about it, but you're like, "Oh, okay." didn't consider this, but this I think is uh, very helpful for especially, I'm 57, right? So I lose a lot of density aside from not having much brow hair. Ladies, gentlemen, you guys know this. As we age, we lose a lot more of that lash hair, right? So then you lose that kind of lash line. So tattoo lining has come a long way. <laughs> and so I'm going to take you into my liner tattoo journey. It's just, it's just actually a, a touch up from a, not having it done a few years ago. I do this every two to three years. So yeah, don't forget, put this on your calendar. You don't want to miss it next week. But until then, thank you for joining me again. And I will see you guys right back here.